The rivalry between former U.S. President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has only intensified this after DeSantis formally entered the 2024 presidential race. Donald Trump mocked DeSantis polling numbers and videos uploaded to Truth Social and called him DeSantimonious. Former U.S. President also said that DeSantis handling out a legal dispute with Disney was a mess and that he intended to show the fake news how a tough guy he is. Florida Governor DeSantis' 2024 offensive presidential campaign launch event drew mockery from his rivals and renewed doubts about his viability as a national candidate. Remember, his planned Twitter Spaces conversation saw multiple technical glitches that delayed his announcement by a good 20 minutes. Remember, he shared the stage with Elon Musk. Twitter owner Elon Musk blamed the connectivity difficulties on servers but not having sufficient bandwidth. DeSantis then laid out his agenda, addressing national crime rates, promoting energy, independence and handling the rise of migrants in the United States at the Mexico border. Meanwhile, DeSantis is all set to make speeches and hold chats in a four-day swing across 12 cities and towns which will take place from the 30th of May to the 2nd of June. Rob DeSanctimonious and his poll numbers are dropping like a rock. I would almost be inclined to say these are record falls. The question, is Rob just young and experienced and naive, or more troubling, is he a fool who has no idea what the hell he's doing? We already have one of those in office. We don't need another one. We need MAGA. Make America great again. That's what we want. Make America great again. We have no choice. This is the last shot we've got at it. If we don't win this time, our country is in really big trouble. When the Ron de Sanctimonious facts come out, you will see that he's better than most Democrat governors, but very average at best compared to Republican governors who have done a fantastic job. How about the fact that he had the third most deaths of any state having to do with the China virus or COVID? Even Cuomo did better. He was number four. He shut down everything, including the beaches. Other Republican governors didn't do that. They kept it open. It was their choice. I gave them all their choice. The Democrats blew it big. A lot of Republican governors did a fantastic job. And look at Disney and what a mess it is. Could have worked out an easy settlement, but no, he wanted to show the fake news how tough a guy he is. He's not. And the whole Disney thing is really very unfortunate. Now thousands and thousands of jobs are being stopped, and a lot of people are very upset about it. I also take this opportunity to tell Mr. DeSantis, who yesterday announced his candidacy. All of his playing politics with migrants was because he wanted to be the Republican Party candidate. So yesterday, he announced his candidacy. What he enforced in Florida, an anti-immigrant policy, I wish the Hispanics of Florida wake up and don't give him a single vote. Mr. DeSantis need to be questioned because it could be, as they are very hypocritical, he could have migrants working for him. DeSantis talked about fentanyl, again thinking that's going to get him votes. Maybe the fentanyl is coming through Florida. So we will reverse Biden's energy policies very quickly, but we also need a Federal Reserve that's going to focus on maintaining a stable dollar. They should not be the economic central planner uh, for our country. They're not accountable to anybody. They're not elected by anybody. And yet their printing of money has really thrust us into this. They said there wouldn't be inflation, and yet here we are. Now they've been hiking interest rates, and that hurts the economy. So we need a Fed focused on a stable dollar. Uh, and don't worry about trying to manipulate the rest of the economy. No, I would not keep Chris Ray as director of the FBI. There'd be a new one on day one. I think that's very important. In terms of an attorney general, you need someone that's got a really strong backbone. You need somebody that knows if you're going in there and you're taking care of business, the Washington Post is not going to like you. New York Times is not going to like you. You're going to get attacked by CNN, and you've got to wear that as a badge of honor. Florida is where woke goes to die. We are not a sanctuary state. In Florida, we do education, not indoctrination. We 
fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. We will continue to recognize that in the state of Florida, parents have a fundamental role in the education, health care, and well-being of their children. We will not move from that. I don't care what corporate media outlets say. I don't care what Hollywood says. I don't care what big corporations say. Here I stand. I'm not backing down. You know, a corporatist would say that you have to give Disney everything at once. Well, in reality, uh, Disney was enjoying unprecedented privileges and subsidies. They controlled their own government in Central Florida. They were exempt from laws that virtually everybody else had to follow. But I can tell you this, Disney may have gotten everything they wanted in Florida for the last 60 years, but there's a new sheriff in town now, and we are not backing down to that. We also exposed their uh, black history hoax, trying to say we don't do black history in Florida. And they did that because we had an advanced placement course that was proposed that had Marxism and CRT and queer theory and all this stuff under the auspices of African American studies. And in Florida, we do education, not indoctrination. So we rejected it. Yes, if you have folks that are inclined to think Florida's a good place, our message to them is we are not a sanctuary state, and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction. And yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures. Um, this is a man um, who has, in a very short time, uh, introduced and passed uh, multiple uh, acts of legislation that serve to erase or harm uh, some of the most vulnerable members of the LGBTQ community, but really all of them. And I might add that a lot of those, um, a lot of that legislation also serves to harm and erase the most vulnerable across the board. Uh, this is a city that recently uh, inaugurated our Drag Laureate. Um, we also are the birthplace of Drag, uh, drag Story Hour. Um, and these, the very, um, the very art of drag has been a, a focal point for hatred from uh, Governor DeSantis. So I, I, I find it concerning that someone who's supposed to that you know actively sought out to acquire this company has been you know in the Bay Area for such a long time would align himself with a campaign like this. Uh, you know, I just excuse my French, but I just thought it was like bullshit. None of what he was saying, I think, was actually true, and it's just it was very painful to listen to someone speak that was launching himself uh, to, to, to be president, um, you know, for a presidential bid. Um, and him to just say um, many remarks that were just not founded on truth while claiming that he was uh, leading his campaign uh, founded on facts and truth, when in reality, it's n nothing of the sort. After experiencing what happened on Twitter, I don't have much faith in his campaign just because I think it's very telling that if no one's ever done this on Twitter and Twitter spaces before and knowing how Twitter has been having a lot of failure problems because of all the staff that they lost, like to have his his team and himself believe that this was going to be a successful launch for his campaign um, and it completely failing is so telling on how the rest of his campaign is going to go.